Last week, M80 officially unveiled their long-rumored entry into professional Counter-Strike. And just as said rumors suggested, their roster is hot, up and coming, and of course, North American. Which is great, really. We love to see these types of surges. The question is whether it's too late. With Liquid moving to EU and EG and Complexity still struggling to find their footing, you can't help but wonder, is NACS finally, really, truly past the point of no return? Okay, so before we get into the video, our friends over at AT&T are putting on the third annual AT&T Annihilator Cup, happening every Thursday in July. Tune in as 20 of your favorite creators like Tarek, It's Timmy, and Lyric play different games for glory, bragging rights, and real cash. You can also watch the content we will be making about the cup throughout the month to keep up with all of the best moments so you don't miss out. Okay, so, NACS. Home of the whiffed shot, missed smoke, and self-inflicted molly. EU's favorite meme. Look, it's no secret that North American esports in general is one of the biggest memes in competitive gaming. It's also no secret that North American Counter-Strike in particular is just on a special storied level of sad. It's almost as bad as NA League. Almost. The reason for this is Actually, very simple. Throughout the 20 plus year history of Counter-Strike, it's never really been that popular in North America. The European player base has pretty much always been like 10 times larger than North America's, which is why y'all are so much damn better. Yes, I know you like to think it's because of genetics, but I assure you, it's not. It's because y'all play the f***ing game. We are scrubs. Not because we're Valorante enthusiasts who are afraid of realism and Dark Corridor. I mean, we are. But because, until very recently, the prevalence of PC gaming in North America was vastly outweighed by that of console gaming. Okay, so why am I saying all of this? Because even the highs, 15-year-old nothing, CGS, the early days of Go, C9 winning the major, Liquid Speed running the slam, were basically flashes in the pan. NACS has sort of always just been getting by. And then COVID and the cartoon shooter came along and dealt it a very serious blow. Everything moved online and or to Europe and made it impossible to be simultaneously North American and sustainable. From 100 Thieves to Chaos Esports, never forget, orgs started dropping out like flies. There were holdouts, of course. Grassroots hopefuls like Party Astronauts, ATK, and Bad News Bears, but by the time everything shook out, there were basically three upper tier rosters carrying the entire scene on their shoulders. Complexity, Evil Geniuses, and Team Liquid. Now, in terms of international presence, it's fair to say that Team Liquid were pretty much single-handedly shouldering the hopes and dreams of NACS. They weren't the only good team, but they were the only great team. That is, until a couple of weeks ago, when they dropped Elige and moved to EU. I made a Donat Me specifically about that move, which you can check out if you're so inclined, but suffice it to say, it might be the worst blow that NACS has ever endured. Seriously. It left the region feeling sad, bewildered, and in some cases, outright betrayed. The scene was thrust into an extremely tenuous place. So much so that since Liquid's departure, a huge portion of the community has started to wonder whether it might eventually be regarded as the death knell of NACS. So let's talk about it. Is NACS, for all intents and purposes, dead? The simple answer is no, it's not dead. Not yet. Since moving to complexity, Elige has elevated this feisty group of mostly North American misfits into a real hopeful. And whether the result of mismanagement or otherwise, EG's decision to promote academy players in lieu of signing European heavyweights is an interesting one that, at the very least, keeps North America on the board. I agree with Valens that it could prove to be a super interesting story. And then, late last week, M80 announced that they would be doing exactly what it was rumored they'd be doing. 
signing a world-class CS2 roster. All right, world-class might be a bit of an overstatement, but the roster is great and crucially North American. And let's just say that domestically, they're off to a pretty strong start. X snakes. They could bring this in. Lake knows where one of the players is with a Swisher. He's got the AWP coming alive. Molly, don't down over towards short. That's where two of the players are. Swisher, AWP in hand, waiting for them to push on. It's going to be Surix going in for the boost. It's going to be Wolfie though for the spray. He finds one, going for the second kill. He can't. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. The AWP from Swisher comes down. First, you've got Swisher, who many are regarding as NA's next breakout talent. So much so, in fact, that people were actually hoping Liquid might consider him as a Nitro replacement. Then there's Monks, the former Copenhagen Flame, who turned more than a few heads on Ecstatic, and Malbs, the Team 1 slash 0 Nation entry fragger who is just cracked. Then you've got Wolfie who's coming from Fnatic Rising and Rec who's still looking for that chance to prove himself at a high level and of course Def as the coach. All in all an exciting roster genuinely. Will they save North American Counter-Strike? Probably not but they don't have to. They just have to do that thing that Chaos did once upon a time and become the darling roster that everyone roots for. The locally sourced, grass-fed one that proves there actually can be a future for the scene. The question as to whether NACS can be saved isn't on any one roster. It's on CS as a whole. More specifically, CS2. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say that North American CS is back, baby, just you wait, because I don't know if that's true. What I do know is that orgs such as M80 aren't psychopathic for betting on CS2. We saw what Valorant did for North American esports, and there is zero reason to think that CS2 couldn't do the same. Competitors are eyeing comebacks. Streamers new and old are opening cases like they're going out of style, which, let me assure you, they're not. North American Counter-Strike is primed for a revival, and there is no reason to think that all of this casual engagement couldn't inject new life into the competitive scene. To be clear, a huge reason as to why Liquid left are because they weren't interested in sitting around and waiting for that to happen. Liquid don't want to be a poster child for a region on life support. They want to win now, not a year or two from now. And right now, the only way to do that is to move to Europe. But it doesn't mean that it will stay that way forever. Call it copium, because it is, but I believe in NACS. I believe that there is an audience for this franchise in this continent. I know that because I'm talking to them right now. You're hungry, you're passionate, and most importantly, you're growing. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be easy. It's not as if CS2 will come out and just magically fix everything overnight. It's not just us who needs to care. Valve needs to care. ESL needs incentive to re-establish a pro league so that it's sustainable for competitors to care. Can all of this happen? Yes. Will it? I don't know, but I hold out hope. Because that is what it means to be someone who loves Counter-Strike and lives in this part of the world. Is NACS dead? No. Is it close? Yes, in the same way that it's always been. Maybe a tad more. But remember what they say in the Iron Islands. What is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. I have like 7,000 hours in Dota 2. I just like, and I played Dota All-Stars for like years before that, right? So like, I'm just like, I just, I, I love watching it still. I just, I'm sort of just tired. I just don't really want to play anymore. And League is just easy to like, kind of around in and try new stuff. And 